Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to take a look at this E-War building set by Plastcraft Games. This is a set of four European styled structures perfect for World War II games. It is made from pre-cut, textured, foamed PVC and it claims to be 15 or 20mm scale. This should be enough to tell you that these aren't exact scale replicas or display models. Rather, they are gaming terrain pieces which is exactly what I'm after and I think they will work very well in this role. That isn't to say they're not good looking models in their own right. The pictures on the box are very good looking in my opinion. The back of the box gives us the name and product codes of each building in this box. They can be bought separately though I think it's cheaper to buy them all in one box. There is also a thoughtful diagram with floor plans showing how many, I assume, 15mm scale Flames of War style bases will fit inside each building. There are also dimensions for all four buildings in both metric and imperial. And of course an image showing the rear of all four structures with their roofs removed. Let's see what's in the box. We get this sheet of assembly instructions which is very helpful. I found it to be clear and easy to follow. The instructions for all four buildings are on this sheet. I couldn't find the instructions on the manufacturer's website. I'm not sure why, it does seem like a silly omission. It does make me glad for these printed instructions though. I'm quite pleased to see that all four structures come in their own individual bags. That will make things a lot less confusing. The bags have a small label inside letting us know which bag has what model. Except for the one that I'm assuming is Ewar. 3. Okay, so I'm not going to be assembling all four buildings in this video because it would just be too long. I will be doing this as a kind of series. There will be a playlist available in the description. I'm going to start at the most logical place to start. That is, well, at the start. E-War 01. European House or Casa Europa or Europe? I don't know. If you want to watch the video for any of these other models you will be able to click on them and a link should take you right to them. Here's what the European house should end up looking like, highlighted for your convenience because the box itself isn't entirely clear which model is which. These images can be helpful if you get stuck during the building process. And of course here is the floor plan and dimensions. Looks like you can fit two regular infantry bases and two small ones inside. You may find it helpful to lay out all the parts that come in the bag on your work surface. This way you can check with the instructions to make sure all your parts are there before you begin assembly. According to the instructions the first step is to glue in the transparent window window glazings, which kind of seems silly to do before painting, so I'm leaving those off until later. It is also suggested to add the door at this stage, but I think it will be easier to paint separately, so I put it in the little baggie the windows came in along with the little e 01 label so I will know which model they belong to and then I set it aside. Now to actually start gluing parts together, starting with these floor parts. They come as one sheet, so just snap them apart. It should come apart neatly, but if there are any burrs left behind you can just use a sharp knife to trim them off. Then we're left with with two nice wooden floors. The larger of the two will be the middle floor and it will fit right into place here. It's always a good idea to test fit before gluing any of these parts together. Speaking of glue, these parts should be bonded with super glue. Plastic cement won't work, you'll be able to pry the pieces apart. I'm just using a cheap brush on glue from the local supermarket. I glue the middle floor in here like so, doing my best to hold it straight. You may find it helpful to press the model down on a flat surface while the glue sets. A lot of the parts do have slight bends to them and doing this should help straighten those out resulting in nice straight walls and floors. In much the same way as the previous step, the smaller upper floor is glued into place here. Unlike the 28mm scale e wall models, these do not include stairs, though if you really feel creative you could always make some. Next it is time to attach the side walls. I don't suppose it matters in what order you attach the walls, though the side you glue it onto does matter. The wall parts are cut out so they will only fit properly on one side of the building. When viewing the building from the front, the wall with no windows goes on the structure's left. Make sure everything bonds nice and straight. We are now ready to attach more walls. This time the structure's right, the one with the windows. It is glued on just the same way as the left side. Unsurprisingly, now the rear wall can be glued into place on the rear of the structure. Yeah, mind blown, right? Make sure everything is nice and straight and that's a large chunk of the model built already. One small thing I noticed at this point is that the window parts are going to be very, very tricky to install here in the front because of the upper floor. But that's a problem for future Herbert to deal with. With. Next I glue in this part which is a combination of fireplace and chimney with roof support parts. This needs to be kind of slotted in sideways. It was a little bit of an effort to get into place because it's kind of a race between you and the glue. You want to get this in straight with both the chimney exterior and the edge of the walls. The other end of the building only has the roof support part. I attach this by applying glue to each end, then putting the support part in place and adding glue behind.
behind it. I then hold it in place for a short while and it's ready to hold up the roof, which it is now time to add. At least the non-removable half anyway. All the roof parts come joined together on one sheet. Simply bend and snap off the parts we don't need right now and put them aside. This is the one we want. I think the tile detail on this looks pretty good. Add glue to ensure the roof stays securely attached. You never know when a 15mm scale wind is going to come up and and then attach the roof. It does take a little bit of wrangling to get it into place over the front wall part and slot it into the chimney part, but it's nothing too difficult. I had wanted to leave the roof off until it was painted, but the little room thing with the extra roofy bit, Gable Dormer, I think it might be called? I don't know. Whatever it is, painting it and assembling later would have added more complexity than I thought it would be worth, so I just glued it all together. To add that little room to our little European house, all we need to do is take these two angled bits and glue them in here. Definitely test fit first so you can be sure how they go in. It was a little bit fiddly to hold them in position, but it really helped having my finger poking in through the rear roof opening. Just don't glue your fingers in place. The result is not too bad. Definitely not perfect and a little bit gappy. But again, gaming piece, not display piece. Next, the little room needs a roof. So I take the two angled parts I snapped off the roof sheet earlier. You might notice that one of these parts is just a little bit wider than the other. That is so the overlapping part can be glued onto the edge of the shorter part to create a good solid bond between the parts. The way I did this was a bit convoluted and not really necessary, but I used the front wall to ensure that I have 100% got the correct angle and then glue the parts together. You can see that I did have a little bit of trouble. With hindsight, this is obviously not the way to do this and I didn't repeat this when building the subsequent models, but maybe you can learn from my mistake. It would have been much easier to just hold the parts together at a 90 degree angle without the aid of the structure's front wall. Even if the roof isn't exactly 90 degrees, it'll be fine. When the roof parts have bonded together satisfactorily, I glue them into place, only applying glue to the front wall to avoid making a mess with it. Make sure the roof has a little bit of an overhang and hold it firmly in place while the glue sets. Once that is bonded, I apply glue to the inside of the roof to secure it there too. The result isn't the greatest, but it looks okay. It looks like a roof. I am definitely not a fan of that big gap where the roof parts meet, so I will fix that before painting either with some strip styrene or green stuff. That's a subject for another video. Next comes this. This, the inner side of the chimney. Pretty simple to attach. Put glue on the middle chimney part and then carefully position this end part over that. Try to line it up with the rest of the chimney as best you can, and be mindful of the gap along the bottom where the removable roof part will sit. Then it is ready to receive the chimney top part. Apply glue here, then stick the part on. Simple. To be honest, I'm not really happy with how this chimney looks. I would have preferred to leave it off entirely, but that would leave a big gap. Next, we have these pieces which are intended for covering up the corners, though I don't think mine look too bad. I guess it also adds some decorative interest. They are glued on like so. The slightly taller parts with the angled top go on the sides of the structure, while the shorter pieces go on the front and rear. Take your time and try to get them on as straight as you can. My result, as usual, is not perfect, but it actually does look pretty good. These corner things really do neaten up the appearance of the building. Now we have this pile of little tiny things. These are shutters and they go on as simply as you might expect. Add glue, add shutter, make sure it's lined up nice and neat and the detail is facing outwards, and bam, shutter installed. This structure only has them on the lower front and rear windows. I would consider this an optional part. They could also be installed after painting, but it just didn't seem worth the effort to me. They are raised, so they won't be too hard to paint or even mask for spraying. Now it is time to assemble the removable roof. This comprises of two parts. The detailed exterior part, on the back of which a rectangle is scored. This is where we apply glue and then attach this plain flat piece that should fit perfectly within the rectangle. Make sure it is nice and straight. This should form a piece that will stay on the roof by itself with no assistance. The floor is assembled in a very similar way, only the texture this time is on the smaller inside portion and is that of wood planks rather than roof tiles. That's it, the European house is complete. Of course now we have to see if the floor actually fits. You'll notice that it has a little recess to clear the door. I hope this is big enough and doesn't cause any problems down the track when I do install the door. The structure fits onto its base like a charm. Very nice. Now let's see how the removable roof fits. It is a little bit of effort to slide it into place under the chimney part, which I think could lead to scraped off paint when the model is painted, but otherwise it's not too bad. Because the roof isn't really bonded into place, it does move a bit, creating a big wobbly gap in the top of the roof, but I suppose that's the price we pay for being able to put itty bitty soldiers
soldiers inside the building. Speaking of itty bitty soldiers inside the building, this is how many fits. The floor plan suggested fitting two smaller bases next to the two larger ones, but I guess that is more for 20mm scale. I easily got three smaller bases in here. Of course, you can use the upper floor. I put two large bases up there. I don't know if anyone would have a problem with them overhanging like that or not. Alternately, you can place three larger bases and a single small base. Fits nicely. Obviously, the lower floor of the building can fit the same models as the middle floor. You can almost fit three small bases across the upper floor all next to each other. You can definitely fit them if you turn one to the side. So that's it, one 15 or 20mm scale European house from the Ewall range by Plastcraft Games completed. This model was quick and pretty easy to put together. The instructions were clear and simple to follow. All up, this structure took about half an hour to build. There was almost no cleanup required and just about everything went smoothly, except where I overcomplicated that little roof part. I think the model looks pretty good. I mean, it's never going to win any super detailed anything competition, but that's not really the point with this kit. This is a piece of gaming terrain. If you are looking for fine scale models, you're probably not going to be looking for gaming models that are intended to come apart and be played with. And if you are, you're likely doing it wrong. That said, I'm not especially fond of the chimney and I think it really detracts from the model itself. Overall, this structure is a little bit more rough looking than the 28mm scale buildings from this manufacturer. That's not to say it's bad though. I think it's going to look really good when it's painted up, and even better when combined with the rest of the models in this box when they're painted too. As to when I will paint these, you'll probably not be surprised to hear me say, I don't know, one day. I don't actually have any 20mm scale stuff with which to compare this model, but I do think it looks quite good with my 15mm scale stuff. It's not quite perfect, but it is close enough that it doesn't matter. Just the same as using HO scale model railway stuff for your Flames of War games. It looks close enough. All you really need is something to represent a building. You could use a simple cardboard box and have just as much fun, but it is much nicer to have building shaped buildings. These are a good cheap alternative to the likes of foregrounds which, while they are nice models, they are a bit on the more expensive side. In this box I got four buildings and it cost less than a lot of the single foreground structures. These Ewar models are also significantly less fiddly and quicker to assemble too, which I know is a big thing for some people. Either way, I like that there are so many options out there. It's a good time to be a wargamer. These structures are meant to be cheap, quick and easily built wargaming pieces. Not super detailed display pieces and in that regard I think they work very very well. So, have you built anything from Plastcraft Games before? Either one of their many varieties of pre-cut kits or just using their textured sheets? I'd like to hear what you think in the comments section below, along with any questions, comments or suggestions you might have. I do hope this video has been helpful or interesting for you. If you like the videos I make, it would be really helpful if you were to click like, subscribe and of course share my videos with anyone you think will like them or find them useful. If you really like what I do, please consider supporting me via Patreon at patreon.com slash herberturperderp. It would be very much appreciated, though of course even if you don't want to or can't, I do still appreciate you watching my videos. Thanks, farewell.